So welcome to another episode of TFL Today. I'm Andre Smirnoff with the Fast Lane Truck, and with me, Kent with MrTruck.com. Greg, glad to be alive. I mean, glad to be live. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough day. We have snow blizzard here oh. in, in May in Colorado. Yes, we get a lot of snow in May, actually, in a normal year. And so we got snow, we got rain, I got a whole yard full of water. Yes, and mud, and we want to pave your yard, but yes. we, uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, this is another episode of Ask Mr. Truck, and we haven't done one of these in a long time. Yes, that's right. Um, so uh, right, maybe we, you guys didn't like me anymore or something. I didn't know what was going on. Anyway, go no, ahead. we we like you, Mr. Truck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, an Ask Mr. Truck is where we gather questions from you guys. So they come to us on YouTube, um, on our channels, TFL Truck, TFL Now, and we gather it on our you know email accounts right. um, and our website as well. So we we got a few questions, and we're we want you to participate, of course, and ask questions live. Right. But right. we're going to do a couple of questions first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's a little hard on some of the real longer questions. Yeah. They're like two pages long, so. And I do have a, a few announcements. I have my laptop next to me so I can monitor the live chat. Um, we have a truck. Can you describe the truck here? This is a 2017 Ram. Yeah, it's a Ram 2500 Tradesman, so it's like a work truck. And it's, so it's a real basic truck, and it's got a nice chrome package, so it looks good. It has a chrome grill and chrome wheels, but it does not have power mirrors, power seats, power door locks, power windows. Of all those things, the one that Is that, that your I, cell phone? No, that's... Oh, cheap. my goodness. Holy cow. Well, you, it's my mechanic. He's ready to get Dodzilla <laughs> off the ground. Wait a minute. You're working on a project truck? Yeah. What, what, is there, what is your project truck? It's a 1994 second-generation Ram 1500. It's got a three-inch lift, a, or a three-inch body, three-inch body lift, four-inch chassis lift, and we're doing exhaust, transmission, a bunch of stuff to it. So Ruben's just calling in. I'm sure he's wanting to make sure that I'm still coming today, so we can finish this project. And then I can come on and take on Big Green and Rusty Boy. Wow, that's going to be exciting. And of course, I really want to compare all the older trucks because we have three decades represented. Right. You know, we have the 70s with the Ford F250 High Boy. Mm -hmm. We have the 80s with a big green truck, our Chevy K10, mm -hmm. uh, which is an 85. And then your truck the is 90s. a 94. Yeah, and I've lived through all those decades. I'm not so sure you were born back then. No, but... I wasn't born <laughs> in the High Boy years. Yeah, see, I was, so, I was in high school in the High Boy years. So. so um, so that's going to be really exciting. Another exciting thing is during our live shows, we're giving away T-shirts, and we're going to give away this shirt today. It has TFL car in the front, and I know Kent, you don't like cars. Well, yeah, I'm so glad <laughs> that the truck on the back is much bigger than the car. On the, the truck front. on the back is much bigger, and we're giving away shirts in this way. Those of you guys who support us on the Patreon campaign, Patreon.com/TFLcar. Those of you guys who support us at the biggest level, which is $10 a month, we pick a name at random at every show, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, at random. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to give away a signed shirt, though. Cool. So you and I, at the end of the show, which is going to be another about 20 minutes, we're going to sign the sleeves okay. and give it away, okay? Cool. Um, so let's start. And the first question I wanted to start with has to do with the truck behind us. Mm -hmm. Because remember, we've been doing this for about a year, right? Ask Mr. Oh, probably, Chuck. probably. Yeah. Quite and deep. the most common question we used to get, why don't you guys review base work trucks? Well, they're hard to get. <laughs> and now we got it. Uh, yeah. We got it. This year we've got a bunch of them. you got yes. the Frontier, you know, a bunch more coming. So this is awesome. Actually, the manufacturers heard you and heard you folks asking for these, and we've got them. And I understand it because they, these are actually the price range we can afford. Yeah, this truck... As it sits here with a chrome package and several other packages, um, is about just under thirty-seven thousand dollars. Right, right. And this this can carry about almost four thousand pounds of max payload. Yeah. And this truck right here uh, can tow over sixteen thousand pounds. Yeah, which is the highest in its class. Yeah. So, yeah, which is great for a twenty-five hundred three-quarter ton for under thirty-seven thousand dollars, and these start around thirty-three. Right, and that is a work truck, so that's what you expect from it, and that fits a lot of needs. I mean, that's, I've been buying work trucks for decades, okay. you know, from, for work. You get them, the vinyl floors, you get them with... And we can, we can show you the truck in a little, in a little bit. Yeah. So let's do a couple of questions to start, and then I'm going to check the live chat room. So keep your comments and questions coming, and we appreciate you guys joining, of course, as always. And in about 10 minutes, we'll get to all of your questions. But um, the prepared questions we have... Uh, the first one comes from Dan Walker. 
He's out of Seattle, Washington, and mm -hmm. he says he has a 2016 Ram 1500 Eco Diesel, and he's running the factory 20-inch rims, right, and tires, and he wants to do some towing. He doesn't say exactly what his towing project is, right? What he's towing, but he's he's saying, does he need to change the wheels and tires? Does he need to go wider? Does he need to have a more sidewall? What do you say? Yeah, he doesn't need to go wider. Sidewall is a good idea, but it all depends on what size of trailer he has. Now, because the 20 inch wheels with a real small sidewall, his tow rating is down from what it would be with the stock tire. Mm -hmm. And two, those I'm sure are P rated, which is passenger car for the comfort. If he's going to tow something bigger, he may want to go to an LT tire, light truck tire, because they're going to be built by heavier duty. And I remember back when we did that 150 that we had really tall wheels on it. Yeah, yeah, and limited. We, yeah, limited. And we ran it at a higher rating than it was rated at because <laughs> we didn't know how much those tires dropped it. Yes. So when you do want to look it up, you got to find the right websites and find out exactly what it will tow with those tires. But you, your trailer, if your trailer may be 6,000, 7,000 pounds, you may not need to do anything. But if it's more than that, if you're closer to the maximum of that truck, you may have to change them out. But that's going to take a little more research. But that's the, the deal on them with that sidewall tire. That's narrow and you know mostly wheel. You don't have the same towing capacity you do with an LT tire with more sidewall and a yeah. six ply or you know an eight ply and half ton. You're probably gonna get it with a six ply, but this is a P passenger tire, maybe a two ply. You know, right, for right. Comfort. And um, here's the thing. So you, there are some resources for you guys, of course, to check it out. Of course, the uh, the, the main resource for Ram truck and for any manufacturer is the manufacturer website. Right. You know, they can tell you. They have chart. They have towing charts. And uh, on our website, we have links as well to uh, Ram towing charts. And they'll tell you the EcoDiesel is actually rated lower towing than a Hemi. Right. So you have to be very right. careful on the ratings. The other thing that affects the rating is the rear end, right? Right, the axle ratio. So Yeah, four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive weights, all that. Yeah, Yeah. so um, the tires could be okay, but you have to check your charts, right? Right, you got, and that's not easy to find, too, is when you find the chart that tells you all the axle ratios and such is if it shows you a tire size. I know I have trouble finding that. So it, it'll take you a little while to dig it up and see if those 20 inch tires were gonna do your trailer right. Yeah, and uh, before we move on to the next question, I had another announcement. I wanted to make a few announcements. <laughs> uh, you and I co-wrote the book. Yes, Truck Nuts. Truck Nuts, Fast Lane Trucks Guide to Pickups. Right. And we have an exciting event coming up next month, right? That's right. It's June 14th. June 14th on a Wednesday. We're doing a book signing at Tattered Cover in Denver right. or near Denver. Yeah. And if you go to trucknutsbook.com, not only will you be able to uh, find links to purchase the book, and this is basically a guide to pick up trucks. Yes, it is. Anything you can't find anywhere else is in that book. And a lot of the questions we're talking about today yeah, sure. are answered in the book as well. Yeah. And we it's have a very good guide. We have pictures, <laughs> we have a few, uh, some data, we have some stories. Here is uh, you and I uh, working on a truck. Yeah, yeah, we do a lot of work in this book. <laughs> <laughs> we even have pictures of trucks in the book. <laughs> we have MPG tests, we have our towing tests, and uh, a lot of useful information, you know, hitches and towing. Sure. Everything. So, yeah, trailers and, and um, teenagers and If you're in the Denver racks. area on June 14th, uh, come and see us. Just go to truck nutsbook.com the address and the time 7 p.m. is over there so yeah, it'd be great to meet all you folks come on out and buy the book and meet us and yeah. we'll autograph it and we'll just tell truck stories all night <laughs> but you got to bring the kager because we can't bring it in there oh anyway. there's a lot of rules right a lot of rules yeah, yeah. no but Tarot Cower is a great you know bookstore and they're you know doing the signing for us so we're very very happy um, next question before we take some live questions yeah Okay, so this question comes, uh, comes from Kevin. Kevin says, I love watching your show. Oh, thank you, Kevin. Um, <laughs> let's see. What do you think about the break-in period on brand new trucks? Chevy GM have a recommendation in their owner's manual. Right. But when I asked my salesman at the dealership, uh, he says modern trucks don't need one or they don't have a break-in period. I'm following the GM guidelines, but what is your opinion on this? Some people just hook up a trailer at zero miles and they go towing. Now hold on, Baba Louie. You're actually <laughs> listening to the salesman or saleswoman? Why would you ever listen to those people? I mean, <laughs> ouch, ouch. Oh, oh, oh but no. But you explain no. this. Explain okay. this. You used to sell trucks. Yes, I sold trucks. Most of the salespeople last week, they might have been selling refrigerators or cell phones. So they're not the experts. No, you want to do your own research because they're going to tell you anything you want to hear 
get your payment, and they'll try to sell you the cheapest truck for the most amount of money for their commission. So no, they don't get advice from a salesperson selling you the truck. And the manual is correct. You're correct. Go look in the manual because they've changed it a lot. It used to be a diesel truck. It was 500 miles before you tow trailers. Now it went up to 1,000 miles. So they keep changing all that. You know, we, you know, some people will do that. Jump in a truck and start towing with it. I don't recommend it because, you know, you got to get the engine broke in somewhat. you got to get the parts in their groove, the pistons, you know, all that stuff. All has to, to find their groove in the engine to where that they're going to get your best fuel mileage. And that's what I've noticed with the diesel versus the gas that it may take you 5,000 miles to get to the sweet spot where the truck is actually broken in and you're going to get the, the, about as good of the fuel mileage as you're going to get for the life of that truck. It takes a little longer on diesel and does gas to get to that sweet spot. So, but yeah, four trailers go 1,000 miles. I mean, that's easy to put 1,000 miles on. If you can't do it, bring it to me. I'll drive 1,000 <laughs> miles for you. <laughs> that's great, and that's great advice. You know, manufacturers have instructions and recommendations for a reason right? sure exactly and they want uh, so if you look in the owner's manual and now you can google it and just put your year your make and model and owner's manual and you can get a pdf file right there on your phone or your computer and just search for um, break-in period mm -hmm. and the information will be right there so that's very easy to find yes and um but when you're towing oh now my phone is going on what the hell is going on here Sorry guys, we're, we're doing too much today. But what I was going to say, when you're towing, like we're towing at high elevation, right? you're straining the engine. You know, yeah. You're putting so much pressure on the transmission, mm -hmm. the engine, and all the parts, the axles, drive shafts. Mm -hmm. You want those parts broken in right? because right. you don't want to just hit them right off the bat, you know, brand new. Yeah, that's true. So. It, everything needs a break-in period. You know, I needed a break-in period. <laughs> you know, in the morning, we're like well, diesel yeah. trucks, right? Yeah, it's, we, it's, we, we're starting a little bit slow. Yeah, it's like dating in high school. You need a break-in period. <laughs> Ouch. So, here we go, guys. Um, we're going to do some questions that are coming in from you right now. Um, Taylor is um, asking about ZR2, the new Chevy off-road truck. And we know there's so many questions, so much excitement about the brand yes. new truck. Yeah. But you and I haven't driven it yet. Right, we just gotta watch was, all the videos on it. It was Roman. Roman got to go play. It was, but, where is Roman? It, it looks well, very exciting. Roman is busy today. He's working on another video project right now, so Roman couldn't be here for this taping um, of this show. But what I can tell you, you and I have driven a lot of Colorados, a lot of GMC canyons. Mm -hmm. I am just a little bit over six two. He's asking about he's six five, and he's yeah. saying, can he fit in the truck? Well, you, you know more about the height boys, but I really like the Canyon and the Colorado for the size interiorly. You know, I think that the Coma is the one I fit the least well in. Frontier's good, but the armrests are not exact place. The Colorado and the Canyon, which I'm sure the ZR2 is all the same package of interiors, I fit fine. I'm only 5'8", so I, but I, I wear a cowboy hat in here and I have no problem. But, I, you know, I'm a wide-body, heavy-duty reporter, so I have plenty of room in the seat. I'm very comfortable in the truck. So you can address more of the height issue, but you don't wear a cowboy hat. So I'm almost as tall no. as you with my hat, yeah. but I don't, I don't have a problem inside. And you have to duck through the A-pillar for the windshield, you to know, get in. it's a little too close. So you got to kind of whip your horns down to get inside, but that's, that's the whole mid-sized class has that problem. So. Yeah. Well, I fit really well in the Colorado and the GMC Canyon. Um, I'm just over 6'2", like I said. And um, I think if you look at all of the mid-sized trucks, pickup trucks, you know, I think the GM trucks are probably one of the more comfortable ones. I think the next one, and I know you disagree that it's a truck, but the Honda Ridgeline also have a fairly comfortable interior and it has a pickup bed. But the Toyota Tacoma, I'm not a fan of because you're kind of sitting on the floor. Yeah, very low. In that, in that truck. And the Frontier is fine, but what I find in the Frontier for taller people, especially if you have long legs, is the seat doesn't go back quite enough. So sometimes in the Frontier, I would want to move my seat a little bit further back, and I can't yeah. because I'm out of the uh, yeah. seat rails. Right. So let's move on to the next question, but we'll have a lot more ZR2 coverage. Oh, I hope because so. Because you will get the chance to drive yeah. one, and I want to drive one. So That's a truck a, I would consider buying. I mean, I'm really impressed with it. Yeah. Like a mini Raptor that you can afford. So There's yeah. only one potential blemish on the ZR2 for you and I because we like towing. Right. It's towing rating is lowered. 
It's yeah. about 5,000 pounds on the ZR2, yeah. where in the diesel Colorado Canyon, you can tow up to 7,700 pounds. Yeah but, yeah, but that's in line with more really what that size truck should tow, that 5,000 pound yeah. range. And it's all about suspension. Just like the Raptor, it is a real low towing rating. So when you jack them up and want them to fly, you can't always tow trailers. Right. But you know, that size of a trailer, I mean, 5,000 pounds, I think is ideal. So. And the other aspect of the ZR2 that affects the towing is they redesigned the front end. Because they wanted to bring the bumper up right. for that approach angle, right. but it also kind of limited their airflow through the engine and the radiators. Oh, did and it? And they were saying that because they modified the airflow around the truck, uh, that it affected the tow rating as well. Okay. So. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Here's a question for you, uh, Mr. Truck. Um, second generation Dodge trucks. Do you like the 318 cubic inch or the 360? Well, I've got a 318 in my project truck. So I have to say I like it, but you know the ones I had on the farm, they got 20 miles a gallon. The 318 was good it, back then. You know that was in the 70s. That wasn't a long life engine. Now I think they're much better. This is fuel injection. So uh, you know the 318 I think does a lot. But yeah, I like bigger. It'd be nice to have a 360. Just well, yeah, everybody more likes power bigger. is always yeah, bigger. Yeah, I, mean, right? I like to have better. a 440. I like to have a, a 426 Hemi. But you know, uh, Hellcat. So I, yeah, we'll see how long this 318 lasts when we go out there and, and beat up on the the big green and the, and the rusty boy because I may have to switch engines if it gets too nasty. But no, I mean it depends what you're doing. If you're going to be towing traders, you always want a bigger engine. So I would go 360 if I was towing a lot. This is my toy truck where I'm going to be climbing rocks and you know beating up on these guys. So I don't really necessarily need a bigger engine. Uh, if I did all my time drag racing or pulling sleds, then I would be getting a bigger engine or towing trailers. So it depends on everything. All these questions with trucks, there are so many options. So it all relates to how you're going to use the truck. Yeah. Some people, like Jackson, is saying that they cannot reach tfltruck.com from their school computers. And we apologize about that. Uh, yeah, obviously, our website is only about trucks. Right. So I'm not quite sure why your school is blocking our website because we don't you know we're not selling yeah. anything on well, my art site if I was a principal I might block you too though you know oh is that maybe, because people yeah, watch our it's, videos it's you yeah <laughs> oh you're blocking me the principals don't like per you yeah I so mean, personally I'm I, being I blocked. think it is I think that's gotta well, be what it is you know we're gonna try to look into this if there's any security issues with our website we're gonna check them out but we apologize about that um, there's a lot of questions here like for example f-250 turbo diesel is that a good daily driver well, it's a three-quarter ton truck, right? Right, right. And a diesel, I mean, we in the book we talk about that. The diesel, can you afford a diesel? Does it make you any money? And if you tow trailers with it, yes, that's probably a better option. If you drive a lot of miles, the fuel mileage, you know, will pay for the diesel. But if you don't drive a lot of miles, don't pull something heavy. I mean, you can, yeah, you can say anything's a daily driver because it's not going to ride a whole lot different than a regular 250 with a gas engine. So I don't know really how to answer that. that that's just like what we talked about. It takes a lot more answers to get a really good answer for that so it's all how you use it but yeah there's nothing wrong with it for a daily driver i mean i when it's i sold big trucks, and heavy yeah people people buy diesels left and right and have nothing to do with traders they just like the power so i'm not gonna say don't buy it i'm just saying you it's not a logical answer for you maybe but uh, it certainly would be an emotional answer it's you know people love power how much can the ram 2500 regular cap tow in the long back equipped with cummins well, that's a great <laughs> question about the tow chart that we talked about. Yeah. Um, this truck is a 6.4 liter Hemi right here, mm -hmm. which is an optional V8 engine mm -hmm. in the Ram. And um, it can tow over 16,000 pounds. And I think when you opt up to a diesel, you get more torque and more power. Right. But it's also more weight. More the weight. The engine is heavier. Yeah. Yeah. That's so you're losing all... a little bit of tow capability. Right. Ratings. In right. ratings. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's another it's a hard question to answer because... More power from the Cummins, yes, it should tow more. More weight, the, the, the factory can't rate it a whole lot more because of that weight, because it all comes down to a combined weight rating of the truck and the trailer, and you know, you lost some weight, what is it, six, seven hundred pounds of the diesel, so. Here's, Here's a question, question. If, um, if money was no object, what would your daily driver pickup truck be? <laughs> That'd be a Raptor. <laughs> if, yeah, if I was, cab, yeah, right? if I was a rich dude and nothing else to do, I mean that would be my favorite toy. Yes. Okay. You yes. can jump. Uh, I could jump in over the, the ditch. Yeah. Yeah. That. I mean, that is one fun truck. I mean, that may not be a practical truck, but it's a fun yeah. truck. Yeah. Well, for me, hmm, hmm. You know what? I haven't driven the ZR2 yet, but I really want to drive yeah, one. Yeah, it's exciting. Because I truck. think that might be a really good truck because it has a suspension. 
It has fairly good power mm -hmm. from the two engine options, right. gas and diesel. And also um, lockers, front and rear lockers, so it can yeah. be really fun. Well, what about um, your boat? Will it pull your boat? No, it won't pull my boat. There you go. You can't do Maybe it. Maybe I, you know, if money was no object, <laughs> I would uh, build a truck for myself. Would you? Yeah. I'll probably get a three-quarter ton or one ton single rear wheel, uh -huh. stretch it, make it like a six-door, you know, so I have like a limo. Yeah, that'd be practical. Like a limo um, with a shorter bed. Actually, no, a longer bed. And then um, lift it just a few inches, not not too high. Well, sure. And, um, you know, I can sleep, you know, I can build like a bunk bed in the back so I can take it camping, right. tow my boat. Yeah, build a truck you can't park anywhere. That'd be a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it goes from the garage to the lake, to the lake house. Yeah, to the, the lake rich house. rich dude, you, yeah. yeah. If money was no object, why not just, well, build, sure. just build your own pickup Put wings truck. on it, yeah. I mean, just never end. <laughs> so, um, there's a, we have a little bit of time left. We have about five minutes. And don't forget, we have to sign a t-shirt. for the On link. camera? Yes, we will be signing okay. on camera. Okay. Um, Chevy Colorado or Silverado? Once again... Um, uh, thank you for your questions, but we need to know a little bit more background. Right. What yeah. you guys are doing. I actually, actually, my garage is not that big. I only have yeah. about 19 and a half feet of, of length in my garage. Right. So I cannot put most crew cab trucks in there. Yeah. But a mid-size truck fits. Yeah. So it all depends on what you want to do, where you want to park the truck. Are you in the city? Are you in the country? You know, yeah. what, what, what you're doing do you with tow it. it. Do you have a lot of people you haul around? I mean, yeah, it just, that's, that's neat thing about truck is they're very configurable and you can come up with so many options, but we need to know kind of what your use is. That would be good if you, that'd be helpful if you folks could tell us uh, like what you use the truck for, you know, in like one paragraph, and then we can be more precise on, on helping you get the right one. There are people from South Africa joining here, from Bulgaria. Hey, they so, got some Rangers down there, some four-wheel Yeah, you have Rangers. some cool trucks. You have Hiluxes. Yes. You have Nissan Patrols, Land Cruiser, okay, pickup stuff. trucks. And they steer on the wrong side, and, too. And also, they have manual transmission. A lot of manual transmissions over oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And little tiny trailers. I mean, they haul their chickens in these little tiny trailers. <laughs> I have some pictures. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't get en enough manual transmissions in the United States. Uh, Ram Heavy Duty. Hallelujah! Ram Heavy Duty with a Cummins <laughs> yeah. actually has an option for a manual. There's a reason why we don't have any manuals. I know everybody misses the manual, and we all like to have a sports car with a manual. And I like little trucks with a manual, and I've got a, you know, another project truck, a 90 Chevy 1500 with a manual. So I, I, I use them a little bit, but you, know, you go to the automatic, you got more towing capacity, you got you know, less problems, you don't have to think about anything, you let the truck do itself. I mean, you know, and your fuel mileage is almost the same. It used to be a big difference in them. Now there's really not. And, you know, it's, it's, it's so nice just to sit there and daydream and fly down the road. Well, I do this for me. Yeah. If I have to think about shifting <laughs> and drinking coffee at the same time, that might not work. A lot of questions coming in, so thank you guys. We have time for a couple more. Uh, there's a question about that um, Cummins turbo diesel uh, now has a crate engine program. I mean, they've had it for a while, sure, sure. but they're now releasing their four-cylinder R2.8, so the little four-cylinder turbo diesel. Right. And I actually saw it a couple of weeks ago, at the, actually last week, at Overland Expo. So um, yeah. um, the engine is not out yet. It's coming out in the fall of this year. Oh, it's not out yet, because they were shown as a SEMA two years ago. Yeah, well, actually... <laughs> And they were, you know, actually they were working with Nissan. Yeah, they're still working with Nissan, but they couldn't tell me any public information if uh, Frontier will have this Cummins yeah. engine in it. But um, there was a prototype, couple, like almost three years ago, where there was a Frontier with a Cummins, and Roman drove it. Yeah, at an event. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, this program is still rolling. It's pretty slow. Well, Cummins but, was. Go ahead. But beta engines are just coming out. Yeah. So they have 25 prototype engines out. And um, I haven't driven it yet. That's the thing. I yeah. saw an international scout uh, custom rig at Overland with this engine. Yeah, and that's, that surprised me because when I was at CMED, whatever it was, two or three years ago, the Cummins an engineer. So you can buy these now and put them in your Jeep, put them in whatever you want to put them in. So they had some kind of package back then you could buy. Yeah, upgrade. now maybe it's an operated fit. engine. Yeah. It's and sure they're saying, you know, you have to wait till fall. For actually, for this engine to be rolled out completely, where you can buy it, they didn't have a price for it yet. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> so just, the, just certain trucks you could put it in, or no, no, no. This uh, one sounded like it would fit a lot of vehicles. Yeah, it could fit a lot yeah. of vehicles, depending on your engine mounts, of course. 
but they're also rating it for emissions for certain um, decades. Oh. So if you have like a 90s rig you're working on, right. or 80s or 70s or 2000s, you'll be able to specify that and kind of get the emissions package well, that's cool. for this diesel. Yeah, yeah, because so, there's a big diesel craze. Everybody wants a diesel. Yeah. Let's see what other questions we have here. Towing for beginners, will you do a video about that? Backing up, hooking up. That's not we, a bad we, idea. We could, we could, we could do that. We could show them all kinds of stuff. So trucks are getting more and more sophisticated. Yeah, Ford um, has that that what's that called? That back um, pro that trailer truck. backup assist. Yeah, a little knob thing um, on it. But trucks like this, you know, work trucks. This one doesn't have a backup camera. And it doesn't you, have power mirrors. <laughs> nothing. I can't live without power mirrors. <laughs> nothing. So if you have a work truck and you're a beginner, you really have to know how to back it up. You know what to do, so we can do yeah. a video on that. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a, a really good thing to do without all electronic gizmos that are out now. I mean, an old guy like me who's been pulling trailers for forty years, all those new things that they have with the twenty thousand cameras and all this other stuff, it messes with my mind. It kind of actually slows me down. But if you're starting out, there's nothing wrong with it. If, you, if you're intimidated by traders, you've never done it before. The new gadgets are great. They're just not for me. But yeah, we'll we'll do that. We'll hook up. We've got six test traders, maybe seven test traders. We'll find one and we'll show you how to back it up because the different links back up differently and yeah. you know, bumper pulls back up differently than goosenecks. So it is, it is, uh, it's a good question and that's a good video. Yeah. But y'all got to promise to watch it because that's always the problem with <laughs> a non truck video is, you know, getting, getting the numbers, Not a lot numbers of views. up. Yeah. yeah. You got to get everybody and to watch we it. have to support ourselves, which is why, you know, we're doing the Patreon campaign. Patreon.com slash TFL car is a way for you to support us. And we're giving away shirts three times a week Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And uh, is that a white pin? One, yes. Holy one of the yeah. things we want to do is we want to sign these shirts. We need a clipboard. Or and this shirt is actually that we're signing right now is right. going out to Matt, that I picked on Wednesday. Oh, cool. So Matt, this is your shirt, going out to you, and Mr. Truck and I will sign it. Yeah, did and you did you wear this? No, no it's, it's brand. It's brand new. <laughs> Dude, oh my. Oh, okay. oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I'm always wearing his shirt, so I don't know what you do. No, it's brand new. Brand new, okay. Um, and for this this episode, I picked a Piotr Nidzwicki. I apologize about pronunciation of your name, but Piotr, thank you for supporting us on Patreon.com. I chose your name today, so I'm going to email you and ask you what size you need or you want, and we'll send you another one, and we'll sign that shirt as well. So do you want to do the honors? This well, is the I, first I time. I want to sign your leg or not. I mean, well, you, where what, the, uh, here. Give, me, give me something. Come on. Come on. My publicist has all this figured out. You have a publicist? Yeah. Right. Do, I put, how, do I put how, Donald on here to put my how do you alias? Afford a, how do you afford a uh, publicist? Oh, she works for food. <laughs> see, what is okay. my name? Do I put Mr. Truck or my You can name? do whatever you want. <laughs> Mr. Truck would be nice. I guess that's an M. Well, this is not easy to sign a piece of cloth, let me tell you. And then I'll put... Jeepers. We need a couple this of staples. Is, this is not easy, is it? No, we need to but get a couple paper clips and lock it down. That looks kind of like are, it. Are, are you telling me that I'm not prepared? I don't know. I've don't, never signed yeah. a shirt before. I've signed a few bikinis before but I've never well, signed I, I wish we could sign bikinis but it's we, not we should be giving away bikinis I think that would be an ideal thing I, okay. I'll, I'll try to stretch it for you since you were no help to me <laughs> oh hey look at that it's what? like chicken scratch I know it nobody <laughs> will know what you're writing anyway oh now you're doing Japanese what's that stuff called well, no, that's TFL truck. Is that Japanese? No, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, you got a fancy. There you one. go. The, I mean, this you is, can never this, watch this ever. This <laughs> this shirt is from uh, Matt. So Matt, thank you. And uh, Piotr, we're gonna send you an email and get your size and your address and appreciate it. So come back on Monday. We'll be doing another live show next week. Actually, three times a week. Yeah. And thank you for being here, Mr. Truck. Oh, certainly. I think we ought to rip the middle of that shirt like. Hulk Hogan did, you know, pull up, you know, cut some cuts in there, show your Well, I'll abs. leave it I'll leave it to Matt. Okay. Matt can do that Matt's himself. Can cut out for his abs, yeah. Uh, Matt can do it to yourself. Uh, thank you guys. We'll see you next week.